Hello, and welcome to our next lesson on Verilog hardware description language. And in this lesson, we're going to implement a really simple combinational logic circuit. Um, the goal here is that we can kind of go through the whole process from the truth table to the optimization to the Verilog to the test bench. So we can view the whole process of designing and implementing our digital uh, circuit. So let's go ahead and get into it. So today we're going to implement a pretty simple but useful circuit. We're going to implement a two bit comparator. And specifically, we're going to do a greater than comparator. So what that means is we'll have f is a function of a and b and is equal to just a greater than b. So when a is greater than b, f will be 1. And when a is less than or equal to b, then f will be 0. So the first part of our process is we need to set up our truth table. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have a four variable truth table. A and B are both two bit numbers. We'll actually break them out into their individual bits. We'll have A1 and A0. And B will break out into B1 and B0. So let's go ahead and lay those guys out next to each other. We'll have A1, A0, B1, and B0. And then we go ahead and lay out all of the input combinations. Okay, and there we go. There's our, all of our input combinations. So now on the left-hand side, the output side of the truth table, we'll lay down an F. And then like before, we just need to kind of use our intuition and look at the bits and sort of reason out what the outputs are. Remember, we're looking for cases when the two A bits equal a number that is greater than the two B bits. So we've got zero and zero. It's gonna give us zero, zero and one. In fact, for all of these ones where A is equal to zero, we know for a fact that f will be equal to zero. But here, we have a equals one and b equals zero. So there's our first instance of a being greater than b. And then immediately we have one and one, so we're back to zero. One and two gives us zero. One and three gives us zero. And then we have two and zero, it's gonna give us one. And a two and one is still gonna give us one. Now we have two and two, so that'll give us zero. And then we have one and three, or excuse me, two and three, which also give us zero. Then we have three and zero, it's gonna give us one. Three and one will give us one. Three and two will give us um, one. And three and three will also give us zero. Now we need to lay it out as our sum of min terms. So if we say that f is a function of a1, a0, b1, and b0, we'll say that it's equal to the sum of min terms, 4, 8, 9, 12, 13, and 14. So there we go. F is a function of A1, A0, B1, and B0. So it's a four variable Boolean function and is equal to the sum of min terms 4, 8, 9, 12, 13, and 14. The next thing we want to do is optimize this expression. So let's go ahead and grab a K map. So we're going to go ahead and populate the outside now to make it fit with our variables. So we have a1 and A0 down in the bottom, B1, B0 here on the top, and this translates to A1 not, A1, then A0, A0 not on the outsides, and then B1 not, and B1, and on the bottom here, B0, B0 not, and B0 not. Now let's go ahead and drop in our min terms. So we have what, 4, 8, 9, 12, 13, and 14. And I'll go ahead and set up our solution down here at the bottom. F is equal to, let's see. So the first thing that should jump out immediately, right, is this box of four that we can make around 12, 13, 8, and 9. So let's go ahead and do that. And that will show us that, let's see, it fits inside the A1 and the B1 knot that splits the A0, the A knot, and the B0. So that's going to give us just A1 and B1 knot. Or, next up, let's go ahead. I think the best we can do here is a box of 2 across 4 and 12. So let's do that those terms together 
and that will give us, let's see, um, A naught, B, excuse me, A zero, um, B one naught, and B zero naught. So we'll get A zero and B one naught and B zero naught. And then finally, we've got term 14 over here, right? Remember that in four variable maps, we have adjacency on the outside. So 14 and 12 are adjacent to each other. So we can group those guys as a term, like so. And that'll give us what? It'll give us uh, A1, A0, and B0, not. A1 and A0 and B0 not. So there we go. Now it's time to implement our Boolean expression here in Verilog. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. Um, let's go ahead and create a Verilog module here, we'll call it greater than dot v. Here we go, we just need to create a module declaration, module greater than, it's gonna have a, b, and f, and drop our in module down there at the bottom. Now we have input. Now remember our inputs are two bits now. The way we define that in Verilog is we'll say input open braces, we'll do one colon zero. This lays out the indices of the individual bits. So if we have one to zero, everything is zero index. So that means we have a zero and a one. Um, so that means it's two bits, right? If we wanted to create a four bit number, we would have three to zero. If we wanted to create an eight bit number, we'd have seven to zero. But here, since we want a two bit uh, value, we'll do one to zero and then A. And we can define A and B here in the same line. And our output f is still just one bit, so we'll leave that by itself. You don't need to define anything when it's just a single bit. Um, there's our input and output. Now there's a bunch, there's actually a handful of different ways um, to lay out this next part. Um, in fact, probably the easiest way would be to just do this, right? Assign f equals a greater than b, right? And this will actually work just fine. Um, and implement the circuit that we want to build here in this example. Um, however, we want to take a closer look at kind of how to do more general combinational logic. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. We'll leave it up there for you. But I'm going to comment that out so we can see the more sort of long form way to do it. Because what we want to do is implement that Boolean expression. And there we go. I've kind of split the screen a little bit so we can sort of see the expression we're trying to build here while we type it out. Same as before, it starts with assign f equals, and here's how this is going to go. We're going to go a. Remember, we want A1, so this first term, A1 and B1 not. So we'll do A indexed at 1 and using the ampersand. And then we need to do an inversion, we use the tilde. And we'll say so not B1. And then for the ors, it's just a vertical bar symbol. So we'll say or A0 and not B1 and not b0 or a1 a1 and a0 and not b0 so like i said that's a little more unwieldy than just writing f equals a greater than b but this shows us how we can implement our more general combinational logic statement, all right, straight out of the K-map. So the important take-homes here are to do ands, it's the ampersand, to do ors, it's the vertical bar, to do nots, it is the tilde symbol. So now that we've got that full expression done, um, let's go ahead and create our test image. So we'll create a new file, we'll call it greater than underscore tb dot v and we have to do a little bit of setup so remember we have to first declare the time scale one nanosecond slash one nanosecond then we need to include the file we're going to test 
So include greater than dot v. And then we declare our module for our test bench, module greater than underscore tb. Remember, it doesn't have input and output parameters, so we don't list any. End module. Now we have registers. These are our two bits inputs. So reg one to zero and comma b. Our wire f for our output. And then we have our unit under test. We'll say our greater than module uut for unit under test a comma b comma f. And then we do stuff. Initial begin. So a couple of new things here that we haven't seen before. The first thing we want to look at is what's called vector notation, right? Instead of writing out every single input the thing we want to do, we can actually wrap everything up by using these curly braces and put A and B inside those curly braces. What that does is basically say, let's take this, these two two-bit values and let's just treat them as one four-bit value. So we can assign to it all at once. So what we need to do there is say, first off, the number of bits we're working with. So it'll be four, apostrophe. Now there's a couple things we could do. We could write it in binary and that would be like B000. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is actually write it in decimal. So I'll use a D for decimal, base 10, and say D0. Semicolon, and then I'll do my hashtag 20 out here. I like to do these both in one line just to keep things a little bit more streamlined. And then what I'll do is I'll add a case for every row of my truth table. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then let's go back and fill in those numbers. One, two, three, four, five, I'm going to full screen this again. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And just like four, let's go ahead and put a little message at the bottom to say that we are finished, just is complete. All right, and there we go. That's our whole test bench for our greater than module. So now we actually wanna run it and view the waveform to make sure that it's working properly. So I'll open up the PowerShell here. Um, we'll remember our Syntax for running everything to generate the simulation files. We have to do I uh, Verilog. Option O, the name of the file we're about to create, the simulation file. So that's greater than testbench.vvp. We're going to make it from greater than testbench.v. Now I actually need to run the simulation. VVP. Oop. And I just realized we forgot one really important thing, right? We forgot to add the files that are going to tell us where to put our output. Remember, we need to have at the beginning of the initial begin, we need to have the the dump file, tell it to draw the waveform simulation for us greater than tb.vcd, otherwise we'd have nothing when we open GTK wave. And the dump vars, zero, greater than tb. Now we're ready to go ahead and do it again. So we need to run that first command again, the iverilog. Now we do the stuff. Run the simulation, vvp greater than tb.vvp. Right, there we go. So now we've created the .vcd file and we see our text there that says the test is complete. And then finally, let's open up GTK wave and view those waveforms. So we'll bring that in here. We're gonna go to file, open new tab. We'll grab the .vcd file. We'll check it out and then we'll take a look at all of these signals. So we'll select them all and hit append, and now we can see our output. And now what we wanna do here is just kinda of look at the waveform and make sure it's doing what we wanted to do. Remember that we wanted to see, so we can see A, we can see B, we can see F, right? Remember when A was zero, we knew it was gonna be false, 
And then here we have one and zero. Look at that, F is true, that's nice. And then when B goes to one, now they're equal. So it's zero for the rest of the time. And then A is two. And then while B is zero and one, two is greater, so the F is equal to one for those two time periods. And then when B goes to two, uh, it drops back down to zero. And here we see when A is three, um, F is one for B equals zero, one, and two, and then drops back to zero when they're both equal again. So from there, we can see that our combinational uh, logic implementation here in Verilog is working properly, and it's done the thing that we want to do. So just to kind of recap really quick, we started with our truth table, figured out what the values of F would be for every row, laid it all out as a sum of midterms expression, used a Carnot map, to generate an optimized Boolean expression. Once we had that, we implemented it in Verilog. Remember that to do ands, it's the ampersand. To do ors, it's the vertical bar. To do inversions, it's the tilde symbol. Right? We created two-bit values with this sort of one to zero syntax and then indexed each of those bits individually in our expression. And in our test bench, we used vector notation to wrap our, both of our input variables into a single um, one-line expression to write a four-bit number. Here it's represented in base uh, 10, delay for 20, right? We could have also done something, you know, like let's do down here, four-bit binary for nine, one, zero, zero, one, if we wanted to see the binary values, but that's not entirely necessary. And then we ran our test bench and we viewed our output in here in GTK Wave and we see that it's working correctly. So that is all there is to it to develop a very simple combinational logic uh, circuit in Verilog. So if you have any questions, um, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.